when the federal dollars and the state dollars came in uh, a little after the Agnes flood, it was decided that instead of putting all of the money into just revitalization or uh, flood cleanup, they were going to allot some of the money and funds to go to the city uh, in order to sort of revitalize the downtown. When you look at that original design, um, things were done on the square to sort of unite uh, the public. Things like uh, use of quality materials so that uh, maintenance would be less of an issue, but also so that people would recognize it as this special place. Another interesting thing that was on Public Square at the time was in the granite blocks there were petroglyphs that were etched, sand etched, uh, sand blasted into the surfaces. And they were different symbols. They were either sort of maps of where Public Square is in connection to the Market Street Bridge, or um, they were symbols that related to the farmer's market, or um, some of the other sort of regional historic elements. So. And there's actually a map of that. So ironically, at the time, it was a way of sort of connecting people through the materials, and people could sort of find these things. It was almost like a little treasure hunt. And that's really what it's become, is there's a map of all of these petroglyphs, and some of the historical societies are now asking to use that so it could be a sort of treasure hunt for kids. Square design, as it currently is from the 70s, and even before that, really connected the two streets. So there were pedestrian pathways to the center, there was a fountain in the middle, so when people drove their cars and when they walked, they recognized the point as being the center. People want to see that sort of life at the center of town. Most, most cities don't have a two acre square. So um, the ability to have a sort of small park in the middle city is, is really an asset for the town. The redesign is sort of focusing on how can we keep that initial idea, but how can we adjust it so that the city doesn't require as much maintenance and people can use it in a better way. We met with multiple groups now. So we met with the farmer's market group, we met with the fine arts group, we met with some of the merchants around the square as sort of an initial uh, information gathering session before we start showing people what it, what it can be. Um, and We've heard a sort of resounding theme from these groups that it actually really works quite well. We designed that so that there are more uh, paved areas and less, um, it's not necessarily taking away grass areas, but it's providing paved areas in places where um, it provides less maintenance. So it allows for the farmer's market and the fine arts fiesta to work without having to intrude on the lawns and then provides, you know, gives the lawns back to people and being able to sit with their children even revamping how the events are used so that you can use the lawns. There's so many elements on the square that could work great and they're not utilized the way they initially were, like the backdrop behind the amphitheater. Just imagine that that backdrop was actually used for banners, but it was also used for a movie screen. You could hang a movie screen on there. Uh, Kings and Wilkes could use it for speeches, lectures, you know, outdoor events, um, you know, even for graduations. But someone like the Kirby Center could use it to show films every weekend during the summer. So for us, it's an investment in how can we create a place for the next 40 years that works for these functions. We know it's worked for the last 40 years. With a little bit of maintenance and, you know, a little bit of care, we can revamp these things, keep our history, but then design something for the next 40 years.